good morning everyone yeah good morning uh, my name is yashashri and i represent age school of data science and cyber security <laughs> and today we are here to um, have a detailed uh, knowledge about what cyber security is what information security is so um, we are having the second edition in mumbai uh, last year we had it in bangalore and it was a grand success yeah so uh, i'll just quickly introduce you uh, to today's agenda you must be having the soft copy with you we'll start with uh, mr bhupesh daheria who's the ceo of age school of data science and cyber security so uh, after that we'll be having uh, a keynote uh, session by dr r k shamsundar after that uh, smith gonsalves would be talking about cyber security attack 2.0 Uh, then we'll be having a short tea break followed by uh, saket korea's session on uh, security operations center uh, then akshay garkel would be talking about cloud security uh, after lunch break we'll be having milin shah from altisource who would be talking about cyber security shift and trend then after uh, we'll be having anand trivedi who would be talking about cyber resiliency after that we would be having a very interesting panel discussion about uh, cyber smart india uh, followed by tea break and a quiz so you will be having uh, goodies that you can grab uh, during the quiz so let's start with the first session we have uh, mr bhupesh daheria who is the ceo of age school of data science and cyber security he is the founder of age's graham bell awards data science congress and edutech congress uh, also he has 24 years of experience in telecom innovation skilling data science ai higher education and edutech so let's welcome uh, bhupesh sir on stage good morning everybody <clears throat> and i could see there's some guys online as well so morning to everyone those who are online and those who are over here i'm really excited to uh, <clears throat> be in this second uh, cyber security conference i think today i have the verdict is there and that is uh, clearly reflecting the participation of the audience <laughs> okay <clears throat> anyway i'm glad that all of you you could really come over here so my name is bhupesh dehria and uh, i'll be setting up a, a brief context what we are going to really talk today uh, most of the experts are here they will be taking on each uh, aspects of the cyber security so <clears throat> here is my agenda why cyber security why we are talking about cyber security what are the employment trends we'll talk about what we are trying to really protect so we all talk about information security cyber security Uh, cloud security what exactly we are trying to really protect then we'll talk about what is cyber security we'll show you some uh, analysis what our team has done about the skills requirement into uh, cyber security area we'll talk about little bit about job market then we'll i'll spend more time on uh, ai and ml in cyber security because that is some area which is untouched upon and that's the area which is growing extensively and at ages we are also doing a lot of work in that area and at last of course we'll talk about what ages is doing to really build your competency and skills in this area okay <clears throat> so this is what the comment about uh, jini rumuti and she says that cyber crime is the greatest threat for every company in this world i would go further ahead of this it's not only every company this is the greatest threat for the entire humanity the government society everybody in this today today zera uh <clears throat> today what is happening like uh, these security th uh, uh threat actors uh, which we can call really call it uh, like a hackers uh they are sitting with a pile of money they are no longer uh, say hobbies those who just like to really hack your mobile phone and uh, sneak what you're talking what you're not talking today these uh, cyber security threat actors they are sitting with a massive amount of funding millions and billions of dollars of funding they are on the government payroll 
a lot of governments, uh, be it uh, Chinese government, be it a Russian government, be it Israeli government, uh, be it Pakistani government, they are on the payrolls. Uh, they are funded with a lot of money and a lot of sophisticated tools. So it's not just simply, or either they are part of the government or they are part of organized world. So if you are a great hacker, uh, highly unlikelihood that you will be uh, working at your own. You will be on payroll of some uh, organized uh, crime syndicate. Those who would be funding you and giving you the protection to really hack into banks. Like 50 years back, when you wanted to really make money, the best way, you become a robber and rob a bank. Some time back, if you wanted to really make money, become a say, investment banker. Today, you want to make money, become a hacker. All right? Uh, I'm not propagating that you become a hacker. <laughs> You will eventually know that no intelligent human being would like to really do into a crime. And if you are guys are watching Crime Patrol, you'll know that terminology. There is no perfect crime, right? So if you're intelligent, you'll know that someday you will be caught. So one of my professors, he taught me that I'll teach you how to do the financial crime, financial fraud, <coughs> and eventually you'll not do anything. Because you'll learn that it is not possible to do any kind of financial crime. Now, the day when I really made my Aadhaar card, handed over my fingerprint, Irish data, and all those stuff, I realized that my crime for future for doing any kind of crime is over. Somebody else can really do, and I can go jail, but at least I myself cannot really do. Right? <coughs> we keep on hearing about Third World War. I say there is no Third World. There is no going to be any Third World because Third World is war is already going on. So today. <coughs> Uh, massive attack is happening in India, massive attack is happening on US, so every company is trying to really protect them with the attacks. The way uh, US elections were meddled and uh, Russia influenced heavily in US elections, you don't have to really attack on any other country. Today <coughs> we are going to have the uh, Ayodhya work dict. Government has already declared that if necessary, if needed, they will shut down the whole social media. They can shut down the entire telecom network. Uh, today, the kind of the way Facebook, Google, these companies are growing, social media companies are growing, they are a, a big threat to the entire humanity. Any kind of fake news, any kind of fake images, fake videos, and which is possible bit gain networks, it can really create a havoc in society. It can really lead to civil wars. Uh, and what not. <clears throat> it is beyond imagination. These tools are heavily used to really alter the human behavior and uh, instinct, fear, greed, and what not. So we're getting absolutely into different kind of uh, world. Now, being Indian, if we have to really protect India, we need cyber commandos. Uh, Russia, uh, Israel is sitting with almost 20,000 cyber commandos on their payroll. Now today, <coughs> uh, of course the government recognizes the importance of that, but uh, we are not uh, publicly speaking and working on those directions. Uh, if we need to really protect our country, we need to really protect our financial institutions, our companies, and our data. Most of our data is lying on the Google, whether it is a confidential data or non-confidential data. So Americans know everything about us. Our telecom network has been exposed to Chinese companies. So all of our data is with the Chinese companies. So what kind of security and we are talking about? Already we have been exposed to this data. I should not be saying this on public forum, but uh, I want that you youths uh, who will be becoming cyber commandos, it's not just simply a career in cyber security and doing some silly hacking into other mobile. You have a huge responsibility on shoulder. And this whole process, you can really have very satisfying career, thinking that yes, you can really contribute a big way, uh, not holding a gun on borders, but inside sitting over here with the power of computer, with the power of uh, network, with the power of your knowledge and machine learning, you can actually contribute in a big way to really protect this country, protect your society, and protect yourself. Uh, let's come down to uh, what is in it you, you for a job because uh, so cyber security has been listed as among top 100 best jobs. Uh, <coughs> there are roughly around a million jobs available in cyber security in US alone and 6 million jobs across the globe. 
these are merely numbers right so all of us know morning i was seeing at nokri i could not really take a screenshot i search about cyber security information security in only in these two years there are roughly around 10000 jobs unfulfilled jobs are there if you want you can really go and search go on linkedin go on indeed and and there are various variations of the jobs which is out there <coughs> means all of you can really get into this area uh <coughs> cyber security unfulfilled job will reach 1.5 million uh, we are sitting in 2019 but these are the numbers only if you i always say there is a stadium uh, vankhede stadium it was there 20 years back it will remain after 20 years do you know how to play if you know how to play and if you have a desire to play you are most welcome inside the stadium <coughs> now uh, cyber uh, crime damage cost will hit almost 6 trillion dollar any idea what is india's gdp what the 6 trillion dollar means India's GDP is roughly around $3 trillion. All right. uh, New York generates revenue roughly around $1 trillion. India is among top 10 countries which has crossed a trillion dollar GDP mark. So it's, $1 trillion is not a small amount. Right? And Mr. Modi is targeting to really cross $5 trillion mark. Double of the India's GDP will be lost into cyber crimes. Right? So kind of impact it can really have. Uh, <clears throat> today, the world population is roughly around 7.2 billion. India is almost 1.3 billion. There are different research which say that 50 billion devices will be there in the next five years, 100 billion, 200 billion, right? So this is the report by Intel which says there will be 200 billion devices. So all these devices will be connected over internet and they will be emitting more amount of the data than the human beings capable of. Right, so your refrigerator, your uh, <coughs> this camera, you have uh, say Alexa in your home. All these devices are connected, right? And there have been instances where an Alexa was hearing you, right? Your TV, which is a smart TV, can create a chaos uh, in your room, right? People can really uh, activate the camera on your uh, smart TV and can really do whatever they really want. Uh, more and more your automated homes can be really controlled. You're driving a Tesla driverless car and somebody can really lock your car. And you can go to directly to the hell, right? You don't know what all possibilities are, right? <coughs> Theoretically, all these things are possible. And there are companies, like there is a company, Israeli company, which is specifically working on, say, how to hack into, say, autonomous vehicles, right? And all these things are possible. What is cyber security? So I would not like to really get into the traditional definition. I would try to really tell you other way around that what all we are trying to really protect, right? We are trying to protect all these stuff, right? Because uh, I used to teach telecommunication management. I used to define for 10 years and then I start, I said, this is a useless activity. Let's just stop it. Let's see what exactly end point we are trying to really do. Right, so information security, cyber security, network security, let's forget that. Let's see what we have to really protect to be secure. So we have to protect our infrastructure, right? Which could be physical infrastructure, which could be digital infrastructure, right? Cyber security today is trying to really protect the digital infrastructure, but cyber security is also trying to really protect you, your physical infrastructure. Today you have a biometrics, we have a cameras, right? So we have done experimentation wherein you, we have a facial recognition based attendance system. Now you can really have the access into physical infrastructure using the video cameras or iris and all those stuff. So I would say infrastructure, be it a digital infrastructure or physical infrastructure, but the impact will be more on the digital infrastructure. But I can't really, you can't really have your company open uh, to anybody to enter and you have protected your digital infrastructure. That's not how it is going to really work. So you have to really protect network. So when I did my engineering in 95, that time only it was a network. And I worked with Optal Telecom, which used to manufacture optical fiber and SDH systems. So at that era, there was nothing like a cloud security or IoT security. It was only network security. And it's still predominantly the biggest uh, <coughs> resources we allocate is in the network, right? Because it's a pipe through which uh, threat actors can really enter. You have application, so you're using a mobile phone, so you have protected your network, but your application is having vulnerability, right? Be it mobile application, be it a web application or any other thing. These applications are actually collecting the data or exposing the data, 
right? And these applications are sitting in a cloud today. Earlier, you used to have the data centers, but now data centers shifted to the cloud, right? Which could be public cloud, which could be private cloud. So you need to protect where the data and application is lying, right? Then you need to really protect IoT devices. So today, your, sens uh, your sensors, IoT devices are on the, say, oil pipeline, right? Or a gas pipeline, and somebody is trying to really cut that pipeline. You need to really detect whether somebody is trying to really tamper with that, or otherwise the <coughs> oil pipeline will blast, right? Uh, robots, autonomous vehicles, this is one area. So I have uh, with me a Lynx robot, right? Which can really play Hanuman Chalesa and can really do a yoga. Tomorrow it can really kill me. So somebody can really hack in a robot and say, okay, shoot Bupesh Dharia, right? <coughs> or grab his neck, right? It's possible, yes. Uh, access control and of course the most important thing is people, right? Uh, <coughs> Now, people are uh, most vicious, right? Because it's very difficult to really analyze the human behavior. Of course, I will be talking about human behavior analysis. A majority of the cases, it is a human who actually becomes an issue to the security. You can protect everything. But as a human being, you are viable. I can buy you or I can threat you, right? And, and I can really uh, force you to really leak the data or do whatever I want, right? Be maybe because of fear, maybe because of a greed, or maybe your ignorance or whatever, right? So this is the framework which we have built. And then we said, okay, people, machine, and law. This need to be controlled, right? Law will govern how all these things really work. Uh, we need to really make people ethical, right? We need to really tell them what laws are. And we need to, of course, update their skills. And machines, because when Attacks are done by the machines, humans are incompetent you, to protect you from the machines, it is not possible. <clears throat> so this is the framework which we have created uh, at Aegis, right? And around that we offer our uh, master's program and scaling and all those stuff, right? This is typically a sta uh, standard definition, which all of you really know. Uh, most of our uh, speakers will be talking about. <clears throat> This is some significant work which we have done for our team. So we also run data science program and we do a lot of skill analysis. Uh, <clears throat> so last week, uh, this week also I presented this paper uh, in Singapore about how to really design a curriculum using the AI. So this is what the analysis our team has done, that which are the skills which is important in cybersecurity area, right? Uh, important for you, if you want, you can really take a snapshot. These are the most important, if you see, the one of the most important skill set is network security. What is something, outlier is Python. Nobody will tell you that Python is important for cyber security, because every other thing is important. Python is important, why Python is important for cyber security? Anybody can really tell me? Why this is, this is coming? Anybody from audience? Yes, so you're right. So Python is the important language through which you can do the machine learning and AI, right? So a lot of people talk about, yes, AI is getting into cybersecurity, but nobody knows beyond the full form of artificial intelligence, right? Okay, these are the jobs like uh, chief information security officer. Another important job is cybersecurity data scientist, right? This job earlier was not there in the market. And this is one of the highest paid job available today in the market. <coughs> These guys, they are equipped with uh, machine learning and AI capability to really do the automated analysis. I want to show you something important over here. Just check this. Lead software security engineer salary is 230K, right? and Chief Information Security Officer is 190K. See that? He is the top boss. This gentleman, Chief Information Security Officer, is the top boss. Under him, lead so software security engineer works. He draws more money than this boss. Right? <coughs> Okay, so we'll spend another five, 10 minutes on uh, machine learning because we, I don't have much time. 
So cognitive security is emerging. Cognitive security is trying to really mimic the human behavior. It uses the AI and machine learning NLP to do the security analysis. Let's watch a small video. The best security professionals build their body of knowledge every day through experience, talking with colleagues, attending conferences and staying up to date with online sources like blogs, research papers and publications. The world produces enormous amounts of security-related data with detailed threat intelligence every day. And 80% of this is unstructured and intended for human consumption, making it inaccessible to traditional systems. But security analysts can only consume and make sense of a fraction of this data, further complicated by the shortage in skills and expertise. As a result, the vast majority remains untapped and dark to an organization's defenses. It's time to shine the light on this universe of unstructured data to uncover new patterns and help analysts outthink and outpace threats. At IBM, we're training Watson for Cybersecurity, a new generation of cognitive systems which can analyze security-relevant structured and unstructured data in order to understand, reason, and learn about constantly evolving threats. It's about building Hello, yeah. I'll spend some time to explain you what is AI and what role it can really play because other speakers, other experts will be talking a lot about cybersecurity. Uh, what is AI? It's artificial intelligence. And what is intelligence? If it is artificial intelligence, what is the real intelligence? Am I holding a snake? Hmm? Am I holding a snake? Yes or no? No. Why no? It could be a snake. Because you know you are intelligent and you know that this is not a snake and some speaker in the morning will not come holding a snake and speaking about cybersecurity, right? So you're intelligent, you can really read. So the intelligence is how an intelligent man actually behaves. And, uh, and that capability, you want to really transfer it to the machines, right? And what intelligent capability human is having to solve the problem, to read, right? Uh, all those stuff. <coughs>